So at this point, we have the data that we need. And I just remembered that uh, it's not username actually. If I go back to my page here, oops. Uh, you see that it's saying uh, undefined index username. So it's actually name here. So let's put name there. Let's refresh again, resend. Okay, so everything is fine now. Good. So now, since we created our regular expressions right here, we see how we can use them. So let's begin with the one for email. So to use a regular expression, you say preg much like that, and then you put your pattern. So the pattern should always be in inverted commas, double quotes, and then you put two slashes like that. And then in between the slashes, you put your pattern like this. And then here we'll put our subject, which is the email. So I'm going to put the subject there. So now preg much returns true or false. If the Send the word I've put here matches this pattern, then it's going to return true. So let's see that. I'm going to say echo here. So we'll see true or false, which is one or zero. So if I refresh now, it's saying one, meaning our email has passed the test. But let me try and put name instead of email here. And try to pretend that's our email. Refresh. You see that there's a zero now. So it's working. So good. Now we'll use an if statement since this evaluates to true or false. We'll use if like that. If preg much, meaning everything is good, but we shouldn't bother if everything uh, works well. So let's put a not here. If not preg much, so that if things don't go well, then we do the error thingy here. So let's create uh, a private. Uh, yes, private error. So let's set this to an empty string like so. And I just want to say this error is equal to please enter enter a valid email like that so also let's put a break tag just so we can add more of these so let's concatenate let's put a dot here so that it's we are adding to what's already there so like that good so if this is not good we'll do that if it is good we're just going to ignore it so let's move to the next level and let me copy this again now this time we're do, dealing with a name, so let me get the pattern that we have here and put it exactly in the middle here. And then here I will put name. Okay, so, so far so good. Name, please enter a valid name. Okay, so we also should check if these are empty. Like uh, if if not empty, so let's write empty here. Email. Okay, so if empty here, if the email is empty or if it's empty or it doesn't match, we do that. So same thing here. I will copy this and put that one there. But empty name. Okay, so what we got now password here. Uh, password, we just need to compare if they are exactly the same. So we'll say if Oop, I may remove this actually, if password is not equal to password two. So here you can put uh, three of these like that. Uh, that's also fine just to make sure. But what I want to do is to trim these values like so. So to remove the trailing and uh, the beginning and ending spaces. 
so i will say actually instead of doing it here let me cut this part out i will do it from here so let me select all these and trim them same thing here put the closing tag so this will remove the beginning and ending spaces if there are any of those just to be sure okay so goody good to go so let me remove that as well if this is not true then let's put an error there as well uh, passwords do not match So as you have seen here, using a regular expression, we can also determine if, for example, you want your users to at least type a letter inside their, uh, what's this, their password, at least type five characters and so on and so forth. You can construct a regular expression to do that, but I will not bother with that for now. Let's come down here. I think we can just make sure that uh, the password is greater than a specific value. So we can check the same thing here. I will say if password is, let's use string length here, strlen. Okay, so if the length of a password is less than, let's say whatever characters it is, maybe four characters, then or whatever number that is you want, you can say password must be at least at least four characters long okay that's good so if we do get here without errors then we are good to go so we're going to ask the question if error is equal to empty then everything is good save so at this point we will want to save to the database so if everything is fine let us save now to save will be very easy what we will do is we will need though to create a uh, random number so i have a function here in my notepad which creates a random string right so i will put it there that be the function so this one will be a uh, private function but we may need it in future so what is this user class no let's just make it private so there we go so to go through the function this is how the function is like this is an array of numbers so it's equal to array. These are numbers, one up to zero to nine, and then there are letters uh, A to Z, and then there are capital letters A to Z. That's all it is, okay? And you can copy this code here. So here we are assigning text to an empty string, and then we are getting a random length. So the length here, for example, I'll put 60. It means it's a suggestion. I'm telling it that uh, the, the, the string can be up to 60 characters long but it's going to decide between four and whatever value i have put which is 60 in this case it's going to get a random number whatever that random number is that's how long the string is going to be then we will loop through and get a random number between 0 and 61 and 61 is because there are 61 items in here so if you want to add a character special characters to your random string you can just add more values in this array like for example you can uh, you can put like comma there you can put a star or whatever characters that you want and add them there only that you have to count how many you've added so that you put the correct number there otherwise others will be omitted so this is the length of the array so to choose a random number every time it loops through and then add to the text via this point here and then return the text so just copy this function as it is here and everything will be fine okay so this is the function name so let me copy that 
let's come up here and let's do that let me come to my uh database so this url address this is the one we'll put the random character here that would be the unique identifier of this user and then there's name email password all these are given except date and rank so every time someone is signing up their rank should be customer then we can change them to admin later on so let's start with rank we're going to say customer and then url address Uh, it should be double D here. The number is 60 because that's the maximum value in that column. And then let's create our date. That's the date string there. Capital H, full colon, I, full colon S, like that. So this is a date time. Okay, so what else do we need? Uh, we already have the password, we already have the... Okay, so the ID will be automatic, so everything else is fine. So let's create a query now. I'm going to say query is equal to insert into users, and then this is where we'll put our column names, and then we'll say values, and then we'll put our values there. So our column names are as follows, URL address, comma, let me check them again, name, email, password. So name, email, password. Now they don't need to be in the same order as they are in the database, that doesn't matter. So password, rank, the only thing that matters is the order here should be the same as the order in there. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Let's check here. One, two, three, four, five. So there's one more missing. That's date, I suppose. Okay. Date. So let me copy all this. I will paste it here. Now, the only thing I will do is at the beginning of all these, I will put a full colon because that's how uh, prepared statements statements work so i won't put the variables here i'll just put re placeholders so i'll put a full column there now the thing is i have to supply a an array which contains the actual values here with the same names here so where is that array so instead of recreating all these because rank your address date that's exactly what i've used so i will create an array so this array here, I will start from here and say empty array. I'll say ARR, or I'll call it data is equal to array. So that's an empty array there. So let's come down here now. So I will use data here. So let me copy data, just the text itself and do this. Boom. I'll do that. So what I'm simply doing here is creating an array. So the array is data and inside there there's name, which will have that and so on and so forth. So everywhere where I used uh, these things, I should replace with data. This way I don't have to start creating the array again. It will already be there. So let me do the same thing here. Data. Like that. Same with passwords. But password two should not be there. Now the reason why I shouldn't put password two inside the array because it's not part of the query here because I'll be using this array inside the query and the number of things I add here should be exactly the same number of things I added in the array. So this is my bad here. Let me remove this password from there. Okay. So password will remain as password, password two, sorry. 
So let me do the, the data thing here as well. And leave password out of it. Let's do it again here because this is password one. And what else? Rank, URL address, and date. Goody. Okay. By the way, to skip from here to the other side, I'm using control and right, uh, right, what's this? Right arrow. Okay, so the things we've added into our array should be equal to this number. So let's count one, two, three, four, five, six. So also one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, good. So if you add more of these, it's going to give you an error in the database when you try to run this. Okay, so finally now we can instantiate our database. I'm going to say db is equal to database capital D get instance. Now, please remember that this get instance is just a function that we created in the database. So if you are unable to spell this correctly, just put something else you can easily spell. It's the same thing with these. These are just words. So you can put any words there that are simpler to type. So let's say db write. So we'll have our query, comma, we'll add the data like that. So that should be done. Now, if you still want to see whether there was an error or not, if it went well or not, you can just say um, result is equal to, and then you say if result, which means everything went well, then we'll redirect the user. So we'll say header location, capital L there. And then we are going to send this user to the login page. Now, remember, we have to use root. So I'm going to put a dot to concatenate root. And then inside root, I will say login like that. Okay, so that should be the... And then die here just so you can have a clean break. But if this doesn't work we will ignore and just let it run down here so that we can see if there are any errors uh, down there. Okay, so let's give it a spin. Looks like a lot. Hopefully we haven't missed anything. Uh, yes. Mm -hmm. So let me come back here. Let's try and refresh. Now, I know if I go to the sign up, uh, controller I want to remove this so I don't need to see that anymore so refresh send okay so call to undefined function get random screen max okay so let's come back here and see what is going on get random string max okay so the reason it's refusing here is because I haven't told it that this is part of the class so I will say this like so I think uh, that's the only error. So let's refresh and run it again. Okay, so as you can see, we are in our login page, which means everything did go well. So we've been redirected to the login page. So let me come back here and browse this. I should see uh, some data here and this is good. So customer, email, name, URL address. So everything went well. So we've been successfully signed up. Now we can see how to create the login session, uh, the login section rather of this website.